Right around the time I stopped watching Disney Channel, a show called Gravity Falls started airing. I watched a few episodes here and there and thought it was a fine show, but I never really got into it because, quite frankly, it's a kid's show, and there's no possible way the show can tell a complex, interwoven mystery that produces dozens of fan theories even after the show has ended, right? It was only years later when I heard how great the show Gravity Falls was, and I decided to give it another shot. I was reluctant because, after all, this is a kid's show, how great can it really be? Instead, I was entirely surprised that this is one of the greatest written mystery shows I can think of in recent memory. I was introduced to a whole new world of mystery, ciphers, codes, and fan theories unlike any show I've ever seen. So if you haven't seen the show or you're looking to re-experience your journey through this strange town, grab a snack and buckle in as we journey through the ever-evolving mystery that is Gravity Falls. When I first heard the praise of this show, I figured I'd start watching it kinda in the background while I'm doing other things, but this quickly changed when I realized just how much you miss by not paying close enough attention. Sure, you can just casually put on the show and enjoy the story of the episode, but if you're looking for a deeper meaning or hidden elements in the episode that hint towards the future of the show, you're bound to find something. Towards the end of the very first episode, if you look carefully, you can see someone in the background. It's a blink and you miss it visual, but when you notice it, it makes you wonder who this guy is and why he's there. Well, I mean, this is a kid's show, so maybe it's just an editing or animation mistake, but the truth is, it's anything but that. In fact, this show doesn't make mistakes. If you notice something that seems odd or out of place, it's there for a reason, you just don't understand what that reason is yet. It's not long before you start seeing glimpses of this figure appear in other episodes, and you're left to wonder who this guy, who doesn't look like he belongs in Gravity Falls, truly is. In the episode, The Time Traveler's Pig, we learn that this guy is in fact Blendon Blandon, and he's from the future, and all these times that we've seen him in previous episodes is because he's going back to the past to make sure the timeline to the future doesn't change. There's also the crazy old man in town, known as Old Man McGucket. As weird and borderline feral Old Man McGucket is, there's tons of hints throughout the show that Old Man McGucket is far smarter than he lets on. In the second episode, we see that McGucket is controlling a robotic sea monster, which seems like a funny conclusion to the episode, but it also makes you wonder how this creature was made and how this seemingly crazed old man knew how to control it. In the Bottomless Pit episode, Dipper drinks a vial that makes his voice deeper that Old Man McGucket made, and we also see that he's made many other vials as well. While this could have easily just been a way to easily incorporate a plot into these episodes using Old Man McGucket as a cop-out, later in the series we learn that there's far more than meets the eye to Old Man McGucket. Looking back at the series, the clues are all there, but everyone underestimates McGucket and wrote him off early on as the town's crazy hillbilly. There's tons of these kinds of foreshadowing elements in Gravity Falls. We're constantly seeing hints towards the author of the journals and even the main antagonist of the show, Bill Cipher, far before we ever meet either of them. Another one of the aspects I love about the show so much that proves it can be a show for both kids and adults is the humor. Humor in an animated show or movie is so important, because while most people think of animation as being for kids, the humor can draw both kids and adults. The humor in Gravity Falls is very unique. It's very on the nose for every situation, which can be funny to kids because it's just obvious and stupid humor, but it can be funny for adults because of the irony and how obvious it is. But at the heart of Gravity Falls is a story about siblings and their bond. Dipper and Mabel are two very different characters. They both have their own unique personalities, goals, and desires, but they play off one another very well. Dipper seeing how his sister is right about how they should relish their youth, and Mabel learning that Dipper can also be right. Sometimes. If one of the two siblings is the main character over the other, I would say it's Dipper because the majority of the episodes are about Dipper learning something about himself through the help of Mabel. This gives the sibling dynamic a very real and interesting dynamic while also helping teach kids some valuable lessons throughout the course of the episode. Not only do we get some great themes and messages about a sibling relationship, but we also have side characters that get actual character arcs, and that's very rare for a kid's show. Seuss is the funny comic relief character, but he gets an entire episode dedicated to his backstory of why he doesn't care for his birthday, and it's because his father was never around for his birthday. And the message of that episode is to disregard the people that aren't there for you and cherish the ones that are. That's pretty heavy subject matter for a kid's show, and it's done brilliantly. 
And as heartwarming as the show can be, it can also be fuel to your nightmare. There are some genuinely terrifying episodes and creatures in the show that really made me think twice about this actually being a kid's show. The episode Summerween, about a monster made of the disregarded candy that no one wants, and the episode Into the Bunker, where we see a monster that combines different people and takes the form of disfigured people, really stand out to me as episodes about creatures that could easily come out of an actual horror movie. But just watching the show, you'd never realize how in-depth the fan community could go and how far the creators of the show went with clues. At the end of every episode, you get about a half of a second of a picture that includes many different codes and ciphers that you, as a fan, could uncover and figure out what's to come in future episodes. Not only did we get ciphers and codes, but there was a real-life scavenger hunt around the world to find stone statues of the antagonist, Bill Cipher. These were actual real stone statues created and placed in different areas around the country where you could go and visit and figure out more elements to the show for yourself. Not even the biggest shows like Game of Thrones or Walking Dead made real fan interactive elements like this, and it's honestly impressive the lengths that both the fans and the creators of the show went in order to make Gravity Falls feel like a living, breathing entity. The show was made by Alex Hirsch, who has a hilarious Twitter account where he still talks about Gravity Falls and how, since he's the creator, anything he says is technically canon, so he has a lot of fun saying absolutely ridiculous things that I guess are canon because the show's creator said as they are. Alex Hirsch is very good friends with Justin Roiland, who plays Blendon Blandon in the show, but you also might have heard that name from a little known show called Rick and Morty. Because Alex Hirsch and Justin Roiland are such good friends, they planted several different easter eggs across both shows to give us the indication that they take place in the same universe. That's right, Gravity Falls and Rick and Morty take place in the same universe. Or I guess multiverse. There's literally so much evidence for this, and I won't get too in depth about that in this video because that warrants a video of itself, and I may make that video if this one does well, but this just further proves how much care and effort they put into the show, so that to this day we can still theorize about aspects in this universe that haven't been confirmed. Gravity Falls ran for two seasons that took place over the course of a single summer because the show creator Alex Hirsch wanted to get across the idea of that one really great and impactful childhood summer. For years now, fans have been asking for a third season, going as far as actually making their own, and you can find these fan animations on YouTube. Some of them are actually very good. But while fans have been asking for a third season for what seems like forever now, there's still no indication or plans for a third season. The real question is, does the show need a third season? Everything was wrapped up beautifully by the end of the second season, and while there were certainly hints that not everything was over in Gravity Falls, sometimes it's best not to get answers to certain questions. If I were to guess if we were ever going to get a third season, I'd say it's really up in the air. Would it take place years later, or would it be the summer right after the one we saw? How would all these characters make their way back to Gravity Falls? Would it be as good as the original? These are all very real and very valid questions, and as much as I'd like to revisit this town and these characters, why ruin a masterpiece you already have? If they were to do a third season, then I would have the utmost faith in Alex Hirsch to deliver something incredible, but as of right now, only time will tell if we ever get a third season. I've been referring to Gravity Falls as a kid's show throughout the video, mostly because it's ironic that most people, myself included for some time, wrote this show off as a simple kid's animation. What people don't realize is this show delivers some of the greatest mystery elements in any show I've ever seen. Writing this show off as just kid's entertainment is just wrong, and if you haven't seen Gravity Falls, I urge you to give it a try. The legacy of the show is just as odd as the town the show is named after. The show is very unlike anything else on Disney channel and very unlike anything that has come from that channel or any other channel for that matter. All of this just puts an end on the cipher that is the strange legacy of Gravity Falls. What are your thoughts on Gravity Falls? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let me know your experience with the show. If you want to see more videos on Gravity Falls, like the video about the connection to Rick and Morty, let me know that as well and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. If you do, then I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.